Hello and welcome to another tropical update from Cayman Hurricane Center. I'm Adam McDoom and we are continuing our discussion on our two areas of interest out in the Atlantic, one in the Caribbean, one out in the Eastern Atlantic. Both areas do have a very fair chance of developing into our next two storms of the Atlantic season. Uh, just going off before we do go, those two names would be Franklin and Gert if we are to get both of them. Anyway, uh, to kick it off, we will start with our number one main interest area, which at the moment is the area impacting the Caribbean at this point, which is Invest Area 90L in the southeastern Caribbean, just to give you general information on that area. It is a large complex area of thunderstorms and showers associated with a broad area of low pressure and tropical wave that um, environmental conditions going forth into the central and western Caribbean does appear favorable for further development and should be watched closely as it moves west to west northwest at around 15 miles per hour. Uh, gusty winds and heavy rainfall can be expected for areas of the eastern Caribbean islands as well as Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao and then further going on towards areas such as Jamaica, the Cayman Islands and areas of the Central America coast. Our second area of interest is a broad area of low pressure associated with a tropical wave in the eastern Atlantic. And uh, it is generally 400 miles or so south of the Cabo Verde or Cape Verde Islands and uh, it is expected to move generally westwards over the next several days and conditions ahead of the system does appear quite favorable and a tropical depression is probably more than likely to form by the early week next week. So uh, going on to the uh, satellite imageries, the floater imageries on these uh, systems here. Here is Invest 90L here in the southeastern Caribbean. Uh, can those convection thunderstorm buildup that had occurred had died down just a little bit uh, through the evening as we've been through the dermal minimum cycle, which usually uh, falls on convection during the evening, usually starts to build up through the late hours of the night, peaking at sunrise, and usually that's when we see a lot of buildup in the convection. As we could see here on the satellite imagery, um, there is quite a bit of decent turning going on in the area, and likely um, we could be seeing a closed circulation either form or forming in the area. Also, as you can see, there are some uh, thunderstorm buildup now occurring uh, as we go forward along these areas here around the system. And again, as this moves off towards the west, the west, northwest, getting away from the South American coast, this should help development further. And uh, going on into the Eastern Atlantic system, uh, not that much uh, really going on with this area of the um, this area of the system. And uh, the reason seemingly uh, to be for this is that, and I'll show you a little bit later, the vorticity of the system or the low level spin is actually much stronger with uh, the area 
of building low pressure on this side. The vorticity is built as such that you have more or less two lobes of vorticity. You have one off to the south and west, and you have one further to the north and east. The one further to the north and east is much weaker than the one to the south and west. And more than likely, what will happen is that this vorticity area or vorticity maximum will end up taking the lead role for development of this system and will uh, probably merge this vorticity area into the main uh, vort max over here and it will continue to develop. Overall, the system, again, big and broad so it will take a while for this area to really consolidate and really uh, organize, develop and intensify. So I do not expect this to really ramp itself up into say a hurricane or even a major hurricane within the next um, you know, 24 or 72 hours, but more over an extended period, say five days or more as it continues westward. Uh, to show you how this area looks all together on the surface charts, here we are at the latest surface chart. And again, uh, this is 90L here in the Southeast Caribbean. And the whole entire area that is involved with 99L here at the present time, they have uh, it centered about here. Again, uh, two vorticity uh, maximums across here with this likely to either weaken or merge with this one while this takes over and continues on a westward track. So uh, in terms of the conditions out there for these systems, well, first let's take a look at the system in the Caribbean as it is the system that will be affecting uh, land uh, at this time and going forward over the next five days. Uh, this is the oceanic heat content for our uh, invest here in the Caribbean and as you could see very high heat content uh, especially as we get into the western and northwestern Caribbean and so our invest area is located more or less right here and it should continue on a general west to west northwest track uh, which should put it into some of these high heat potential and this high heat potential should allow the system to take off as it goes forward. Uh, for our East Atlantic system, however, the oceanic heat content is not as high as it is for our Caribbean invest. So again, this will also um, let the system sort of gradually intensify as it goes forward uh, towards the west. Again, uh, there is a bit of that oceanic heat content that extends out through this area, but it's not very much at all and uh, won't really give that amount of energy that say to be needed to develop into a hurricane at least until it reaches say about 50 west and going forward. And uh, in terms of that vorticity that I've mentioned, again this is our vorticity area for 90L and again the vorticity area involved with 99L and again, this is where they, uh, should I say, this is where they have it located at the present time with the strongest of vorticity developing further south and west along here, more than likely uh, 
this as it is already starting to do merge with this and continue to allow this to develop as it generally moves off towards the west. And in terms of how the upper level winds are doing for both systems, well, uh, for the Eastern Caribbean system, as you could see here, it does have a very good upper level anticyclone that is centered on top of this system. So it's providing very, very decent outflow for this invest area and fairly low wind shear, five to 10 knots over the system, slightly bit higher to the north, but either way, uh, with that uh, outflow, it's just providing a much uh, better environment overall. And as you can see throughout the whole and most of the region of the Caribbean overall has been uh, pretty much below average over the last few days. And this is pretty much the lowest the Caribbean has been all this past uh, season and even uh, going through last year, not too often last year that we saw the Caribbean as favorable as this altogether. And then again, with the uh, MDR region, main development region with our other system, fairly favorable within that area. And then the other thing to take note of is the Saharan dust. Now, uh, as you've seen in my updates previous, uh, me talking about it, and others that have mentioned about the Saharan dust, it is indeed backing away. It is no longer becoming a serious issue for development of these tropical systems. And uh, as you can see here, the really hefty bit of Saharan dust that would create any sort of impediment for development is located all the way up through here. And there's a few spots up in here, and there's a little bit north of the Caribbean along here. But there's not really that much Saharan dust to cause any issues. And for our system here, 90L, very large moisture field. Uh, so it will be more or less protected from that dry, dusty Saharan air. And again, if this continues a more general westward track, it should keep itself out of that. If it happens to take itself on a more northerly track, more stronger system, it would likely run into more of that Saharan dust and likely weaken off, and then the system will likely continue on towards the west. Uh, that's sort of the barrier for the system. The other uh, sort of impediment for this is that there is an area here with slightly cooler sea surface temperatures, nothing too serious uh, to impede development per se, but it is cooler out, out along here. Warmer across this area here, but off to the north, it is a slightly bit cooler. So that would be another sort of impediment to that, as well as, um, as you can see, going back to the shear graphic, that there is higher amounts of shear further north, but in the southern subtropics or the northern tropics to um, impede. So likely with a more southerly track, much stronger system in the, in the long run, whilst a stronger system in the short term would likely weaken the system or possibly even uh, diminish development chances for the system. And uh, just going over intensity guidances for uh, the two systems, this would be for Invest 90, which is currently in the Caribbean. Uh, and generally, it's suggesting of a quite decently quickly developing system, tropical storm, maybe even up to hurricane intensity as it heads into the Western Caribbean. Some that's suggesting that it would potentially reach the Central America, Yucatan regions a little bit sooner. That's the reason why 
some of them do show a sort of weakening as such before it continues onwards into the Bay of Campeche or the Gulf of Mexico. But uh, if it, again, if it does end up stronger, uh, quicker, it'll probably be doing more to avoid the land masses and thus be able to develop much more stronger. And again, for our other invest area in 99, uh, there's pretty much a fair good agreement that it would um, develop tropical storm and some suggesting strong tropical storm into hurricane intensity. Uh, again, the issue with this is that the quicker it develops the further north and the less likely uh, that it would continue to be strong. And the more southern track it takes, the less of a more poleward northward movement that it would take and it would take itself into more favored conditions. Uh, there are some of the models that are on the bottom side of this that does follow those tracks, uh, more subtly tracks. And um, I do think that, uh, going back to this here, I do definitely think that uh, the tracks for this will be more further to the south and towards into the Caribbean rather than some of the forecast guidance which sort of ramp the system up and takes it north of the Caribbean. And this is also supported by uh, other people like a uh, good friend Dr. Jeff Masters uh, mentioned on his blog earlier today that uh, it is more than likely that we would be seeing a more southern track out of this system uh, and become more of a threat for the Eastern Caribbean. So we'll have to watch. Of course, there's plenty of time for this system. Uh, five days out, it'd still be east of the Antilles here. And uh, the main threat uh, for the next five days will be this uh, Eastern Caribbean system. Again, uh, already affecting areas of the Eastern Caribbean, the ABC Islands, Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao, uh, and then should be making impacts towards Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, uh, Nicaragua, Honduras, and off towards the Yucatan uh, later on during the early part of next week. So that is the update for now. I will be back a little bit later. I'll be doing a early morning update in a good several hours from now. So that is it from me, Adam McDoom for Cayman Hurricane Center, and I'll catch up with you guys later.